And uh, finally, they uh, decided to grow into each other, the pavona and the leptocerus there, and they're having But as you can see, the rest of these coral, they're doing awesome. And uh, I'm just really happy about that. And this torch is awesome too, this way. This is a six foot tank, by the way. Hey, what's up reefers? I'm Reefer Matt, and welcome back to the Reef Cave. This is the September 2024 update video. We got a lot to go through, so let's get into it, shall we? Hey, what's up reefers? I'm Reefer Matt. I'm not an influencer or a content creator. I'm just a real reefer like you. I make these videos to share my reefing journey, so feel free to share yours with me, Reefer Matt. All right, and here is the 75 gallon SBS tank. Things are going pretty good in here. I've just been keeping my parameters stable and the fish are doing really good. You see the coral are growing out, all running into each other right there. I called that out, I don't know, about a year or so ago. And uh, finally, they uh, decided to grow into each other, the Pavona and the Leptocerus there, and they're having their stalemate. Nobody's really winning that fight. And this Montipora here is slowly losing the battle. I may move it. This is a Jedi mind trick. Uh, but so far it's hanging in there, the rest of it is. There's a little bit of uh, some Montipora digitata down there. Uh, that's that was just like a little piece and I tried to remove it one time and it just kept growing back. So I just kind of leave it now, even though it doesn't get very much light down there. Uh, the rest of the coral are growing out pretty good. This bird's nest, I want to frag again because it overtakes uh, these Acropora here, especially this green slimer. And as you can see, it's growing into this Acropora over here. Uh, what it does is it shades them out and then it, uh, kills off the tips of the branches and that so I, I don't want that to happen so I'm gonna frag some more of that out again I usually gotta do it once or twice a year uh, there's my little lemon damsels those guys are cool I got those uh, because they help out with little critters and stuff you may have in your tank and they also look cool too uh, I got them in here because I had a few uh, Montipora eating nudibranx and they actually, uh, they must have taken care of them because I don't see any anymore. So that's good. Uh, right here, I trimmed this Bacillopora because you can see some dead tips there. It was growing into this Acropora here. So I wanted to trim it back because that's an aggressive coral. And uh, I'll just keep trimming it. I may cut it all the way down. I don't know. You tell me. What do you think? Uh, let me back up here with that take away too much you think from the tank if I took this coral out right here I mean I do have it in other spots it just kind of pops up randomly but I didn't know you know if it would take away from the aesthetics of the tank or not I mean either way I'm cool with it because I know it's going to grow back anyway because I trimmed it down back there too you see that there was some there doing the same thing to that acro there so I trimmed that down but it'll grow back, it always does. But it takes a while to get this size. That, that's probably about a good uh, uh, four or five years old. So um, I was just thinking about doing that. And it'll also help some of the coral underneath because they're getting shaded out a little bit. Uh, we'll see. I haven't made a decision on it. Uh, let me know what you think though. Uh, this Montipora down here is growing like crazy. That's the uh, Cherry Coral's Castaway. I'm not sure what species it is. But uh, it's growing pretty quick. So I'm starting to think it's like the same species as that uh, Sunset Montipora that grows really quick. Or uh, some of the other ones. Like it may even be the same species as the Mind Trick there too. I don't know. But it's a neat coral. It looks nice. I just don't want it to overgrow everything. As you can see, it's kind of growing over the uh, Pavona there. Uh, not so much the Leptocerus. So that's cool. Everything just kind of finds its balance once it runs out of room. Uh, the Acropora back here are doing pretty good. They're in a little bit of a shady spot. Uh, so I may trim some more of this uh, Monty Cap there, this coral here, this orange one. Um, but the fish seem to enjoy it. See my fish hanging out underneath it? 
So I don't know. I, I want to kind of keep their little habitat too. So I got to be mindful of that. If I wanted to color these up, I could always cut some frags off and put them in the uh, SPS frag tank, which you'll see here in a little bit. And I'll see what happens with those. There's some more Monty Caps. There's Sarge, Sergeant Major Damselfish. He's a really cool fish. And my purple tang. That's right. I got a purple tang in a 75 gallon. He's not really huge. He's only about four inches long. And he's about six or seven years old. So I don't think he's going to get much bigger than that. But he's very happy and very healthy. The same with all the other fish in here. And there's my little black clownfish there. Just chilling in the breeze. And this big old Acropora here is doing pretty good. It's uh, kind of browned out. I, uh, it's not super high par right there. It's maybe 150, 200. So if I cranked it up, maybe it'd get a little more colorful. Uh, but it's doing okay. And then over here, these coral are doing good. That one's breaching the water a little bit. My fish will get out of the way. That's the uh, Montipora digitata there again. Uh, that's the uh, German blue. It's called German blue because... See if I can show you, it's got blue polyps, see that? So that's why they call it German blue. And there's some more of that pavona next to it right there. As I was mentioning earlier, because I have it in a, in a few spots in the tank, but all in all, this tank's doing pretty good. Um, had a few minor swings and parameters, but nothing huge. This tank can, t can take a little bit of that. Uh, it's over five years old now, which are a lot of these corals, so I've just been uh, keeping an eye on that and doing my water changes and my maintenance. And that's the 75 gallon SPS tank. Hey, what's up reefers? If you're enjoying this channel, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Your support goes a long way and I really appreciate it. All right, so here's the tank that's probably doing, I, I don't want to say the best because my SPS display is doing good, but this is the best frag tank I'd say. And it's just funny because LPS used to be like my Achilles heel and I couldn't keep them good, but I might have something going here. Um, I do have the lights on really blue on this tank just because I have these current orbit lights and I really, really don't like the color when I do a white spectrum on this. It's a weird color, uh, but the blue works just fine. Uh, as you can see here, I had to put these star polyps in here because they weren't doing good in the other frag tank. So I put them in here and all of a sudden they just came out. So I'm leaving them in here. But as you can see, the rest of these coral, they're doing awesome. And uh, I'm just really happy about that. Some of them browned out a little bit, but I'll color them back up. That's just changing from the lighting and the conditions of the other tank to this one because they all came out of the uh, softy frag tank. This torch right here is doing awesome. That is the uh, Cherry Coral's uh, 21 tails. And... These two eight cans right here came out of my 36 gallon bow front and they were beautiful. And I had a big, uh, big old uh, colony of both of them. And I even took a picture of them and I lost them. I thought anyway, and little frags popped up and I've been nursing them back to health for another, about another year or two. And finally they're starting to come back. So I'm real happy about that too. Uh, there's some more little frags back there just made. Some uh, branching Duncan. And there's some candy cane corals. Or trumpet corals, whatever you want to call them. So I'll be having those at the frag swap too. But yeah, I'm just real happy that uh, this is working out. I dose this tank with alpha reef. And I keep the uh, alkalinity around 8.5. And, a half. and Got some Ganiapora back here too. I never had luck with Ganiapora until now. Maybe it has to do with the Alpha Reef. But uh, that's really cool too. And this torch is awesome too. This isn't like a, a named torch. It, it might have a name, but that was on a wholesale order. So I, I can't like call it a certain name or anything. It's just a yellow torch. Uh, and all these hammers are doing really good. So I think I'm going to feed them some Reefroids today. And uh, see if they... Uh, enjoy that and keep growing but that is the lps frag tank hey reefers if you're in the michigan area come on out to the reefer ram on ann arbor sunday october 20th from 12 to 3 30 at the wooden garden hotel see you there and here's puffy's tank uh we had an incident with this tank so i'm not going to blame them but i'll just show you on the floor here 
All right, see, well, you're like, oh, there's a skimmer on the floor. It looks like crap, too, because I, I didn't clean it. Uh, but what happened was, and somebody called me out a while ago on hanging my controllers. Let me show you, because on this tank. See, I hang my controllers on the glass. This tank, I don't have to worry about it so much, but this guy right here likes to splash. He thinks he's a shark. He's a foot long. He's a big boy. This is a six foot tank, by the way. So he likes to go up there and swim around like he's a shark and he splashes water and the water comes down the glass here. And what happened was, is he got on both the pump controller and the skimmer controller. And luckily it didn't take out both. It just took out uh, the power supply to the pump, which I was able to just get the old one working while I had a new one coming in. But it also took out the skimmer controller too. I tried to, to get it going and it just would not uh, get back up. So I had to buy a new skimmer, but uh, and that's where they were. That's why I was showing that. That's where I used to put them. So, you know, he's splashing and I had this, this tank's like uh, six years old. So I've had it on there for that long and just took till now for it to happen. So just goes to show it's just part of reefing. Don't take anything for granted. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, that was a little episode. We're all good now. I just had to. I got them over here, by the way, just hanging. I got I to gotta make a board for them. So right for now, I just got them hanging so they're not going to get wet. But I'll make it look pretty here in a little bit. So there's Feisty Finn. We'll start with him. He is getting uh, pretty big. So he's nice and colorful. And he is definitely, he thinks he is anyway, the boss of the tank. He likes to go around and grunt at everybody. Uh, except for the big boy here, Leonidas. Leonidas will put him in check. And this guy here I haven't quite named yet. Uh, that's the burfish. He's the newest fish in the tank. He's getting pretty big too. He eats like a piggy. He eats anything I put in a tank, even nori. Uh, and there's Brownie, bicolor fox face. He's doing cool. He helps keep these rocks clean here. Uh, when these rocks get full of algae, Brownie will help clean them up along with Finn here. And even Puffy, there is Puffy, my best bud Puffs. He likes to help clean the rocks too, but Puffy's the uh, original fish in this tank. And uh, he's tough as nails. He's been through everything, but he's doing good too. And last but not least is Bandit back there. Bandit is a Huma Huma trigger, and he likes to steal other people's food. That's why his name's Bandit. And he's doing good also. So, Things are going good in this tank. I just do water changes every once in a while to help keep down on the LG. I just cleaned the glass a little bit. Uh, but these guys are doing really good as far as their health and that. They don't have any major health issues at the moment. Everybody's eating good, so I'm real happy with that. Little minor equipment issues. I just got to work some overtime at work to pay for it, but I gladly did that to take care of these guys. You know, these are my buds, so uh, these guys... Hopefully we'll continue to do well and we'll just get past our issues here and keep on going. That is the 135 gallon Fowler tank. And here's the SBS frag tank. I just did a little video on trimming Acropora to get them to grow quick and putting them on these stanchions. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll put a little link here to it. Uh, things are going pretty good in this tank. I've been watching my elk because this is a smaller tank and I can get elk swings. So I have the uh, Neptune Trident to help me out with that and the dose. But so far, uh, things have been going pretty good. The coral are growing out. I got some cool style of four over here I got from Battle Corals. Check that out. They're starting to color up pretty good. There's a purple one, a rainbow one, and then I got a pink one back there. Those are doing pretty good and I can't wait for those to all grow out more. Uh, there is Nemo Jr.'s Elegance Coral and my buddy the rabbit fish back there. I kind of got him on accident, but he is a really good cleaner fish. He cleans out all the algae and stuff that comes in this tank and all the little critters. So he's a real cool fish to have in here, even though he's not quite, uh, you know, it's not quite the right size for him. Someday I'll have to put him in a bigger tank. Uh, there is another Sergeant Major Damselfish. There's Sergeant's cousin right there. And I have another little damsel around somewhere, but those are the main guys at the tank. Uh, the acros are doing pretty good. As you can see, they're uh, branching off from the bottom. That was the whole idea. I'm putting them on these stanchions. I 3D printed these. 
uh, my own design just so it would lock into my frag rack down there and then also accept a uh, frag plug. And there's another one right there. They just, they're starting to do what I thought they would do. Once they uh, kind of don't have anywhere else to encrust, they'll start to branch out and uh, get some of that light on them. So as you can see, it's actually working. So that's awesome. I'm happy about that. There's my contest frags for Battle Corals. There's the uh, Flow and the Houdini. And I just fragged, let me zoom in here. I finally fragged this acro here. And it's really cool. See that? So I'll be offering these at uh, the Ann Arbor Frag Swap coming up next month. And I'll have a few other goodies too, like these here. But, uh, Everything in here is doing really good. I'm just actually, I'm running out of room. I got to find out what to do with this bird's nest too. Uh, but I'm real happy with the progression of this tank and these corals. All right, so here's some bittersweet news. Uh, first part is these guys are doing really good here, as you can see, these soft corals, almost too good, really. This Neptia came from the uh, tank upstairs that I had, my 36 gallon that I uh, took down. And this toadstool is really, really growing out. Um, it's pretty much the same size as my hand. You can see that. Um, those are doing good. The mushrooms are doing good. GSP always does good. Uh, but I'm still having an issue with Zoas. Um, I just bought a whole bunch from my buddy, and I lost about half of those already, too. I think I found another issue. I'm not sure if it was something from more recently or if that was the original issue, but I had some uh, nudibranchs in here. They're the Zoa eating nudibranchs, and I only found like three. I found them on different days. So what I did was I went ahead and got some more lemon damsels. You can kind of see them in there. And those guys hopefully will help out just like they did with my SPS tank and take care of that problem for me. So I won't be able to sell any of these frags until I get rid of that problem. And it didn't help, honestly. I took all these frags here. I don't suggest doing this. And I did a freshwater dip on all of them for five minutes. Uh, it was pretty harsh on them. As you can see, they're still recovering. Um, I didn't find a lot. I didn't find any nudibranchs or nothing. I mean, I found some bristle worms and, and some stars and stuff. But I just did it just to see, you know, I didn't want them to have eggs or any more nudibranchs on them, but I really didn't see anything, but it was really, really harsh on them. So I'm just hoping that they'll recover and it looks like they are. So I'm just gonna keep things stable and not mess with them and let them uh, do their thing. Uh, these pallies over here have always been doing good uh, cause those nudibranchs don't really touch pallies at all. So hopefully things will turn around in here. I got me some new fishy friends to help me do that. Let me get a little zoom in on that guy there. He's quick, look at that. That's a lemon damsel there, another little one. Uh, those are from ORA, so they're tank raised, so I didn't have to worry about anything on them. Uh, but, and also, before I forget, I don't know why, I have a 3D printer. I got it in March, and I made this little uh, uh, Eiffel Tower here. That's part of my logo for my business for uh, selling frags, but this overflow didn't have a cover. See that? So snails and stuff would always get in there. So I made a cover to keep snails and fish and stuff out. And then as a side benefit, people are like, well, what happens if all this plugs up, right? You know, what, what happens if, you know, make the tank overflow? Well, check this out. It ain't, if, it, if it overflows up there, it's just going to make the top float away. So that's a little cool uh, extra benefit there that I don't have to worry about, you know, the front of this plugging up and this preventing the water from going down the drain because it'll just float away. It's not going to do that. So I thought that was pretty neat. I purposely put the infill light so it would do that. And uh, it's just cool to have a little 3D printer to be able to make little things like that. But uh, hopefully things will turn around this tank. But it's not all bad news. So hopefully uh, we'll just get back back on track. Well, that'll do it for this video, guys. I'm Ray for Matt. Thank you for watching and happy reefing.